Comparison is the thief of joy. But is it? Hello, welcome friends. Today we're talking about comparison. Now, there's a quote attributed to Theodore Roosevelt that says, comparison is the thief of joy. But is it? Is comparison the thief of joy? And joy and peace are very closely related. They're like this, right? So if comparison really is the thief of joy, it would be something that we would want to delete from our life, isn't it? Let's take a deeper look. If comparison is the thief of joy, what exactly are we talking about? The word comparison. The definition of comparison from dictionary.com is a consideration or estimate of the similarities and dissimilarities between two things. Okay, that doesn't sound like the thief of joy, does it? There were some other memes and quotes that I pulled up um, from the internet in preparation for this. Comparing yourself with others is one of the highest forms of self-destruction. And people who love themselves don't destroy themselves. Well, I agree with the last part of that. People who love themselves do not destroy themselves. Another is comparison is the enemy of creativity. And creativity is pretty important and something that a lot of people and companies and etc. believe is missing from the world today. So if comparison is the enemy of creativity, we would certainly want to get rid of comparison, right? There's another. Comparison is an act of violence against the self. Okay, that kind of goes with the other one. And then, of course, there's don't compare yourself to others. There's no comparison between the sun and the moon. They shine when it's their time. Okay, sure. They do. Now, I believe that the words that we use are very important. Our words carry meaning. That's how we communicate with ourselves, our mind, and the world. And when we say things like comparison is the thief of joy, or don't compare your life to others, don't compare your path to others, don't compare your children, don't compare, that's not what we actually mean, is to not compare. Comparing is something that we do, that we as humans, that we do to make sense of the world. Categorize self is not comparing the thief of joy. In and of itself, let's dig it. Is not the thief of joy. Let's dig it. So when we have a small baby, we do things like mommy, mommy, Rosie, Rosie, right? And that is putting a label on a person which is comparing because I am not Rosie and she is not mommy. Okay. These are things that we learn from very early age. We can look at these two highlighters here. One is green and one is pink. We are judging the similarities and the dissimilarities. So they are the same size. They look exactly the same. They both have a gray strip right here, but one is green in color and one is pink in color and they both write in their respective colors. So that's a comparison, but I'm not feeling any less joy, <laughs> and I don't think my highlighters are either, right? Then two more different objects, right? Both fruits, but orange and banana, right? The orange is round, and it's orange in color, and it's got a rough skin, and 
a thick peel. And, you know, of course, if we were to open it up and it's juicy and it has segments where they're noticing the things that it has. And then we were like, well, this one's very different. That's a comparison. We're comparing the two. One's orange and one's yellow. One's round in shape. One has this distinctive banana shape. <laughs> one has, they both peel. That's similar, but they peel and they, they, um, show us very different fruit. They give us very different actual fruit. Okay. So I could just compared an orange and a banana, but I don't feel any less joy and it hasn't affected the orange or the banana. So it's not the comparison. I can even be like, well, I live in a big house and Susie lives in a small house or I drive a minivan and Susie drives a truck. These are comparisons of our living space, of our vehicles. That alone is also not a thief of joy. And we, we teach even in, you know, preschool and kindergarten, there are comparison exercises for to train us, to treat, train us and to teach us. Cause these are things that we see and, and do naturally we don't need to be taught this but where there's you know two sides of the paper you know the the old um game of like there's things missing on one side you know find the five things that are different in this picture that's a that's a an exercise of comparison so the comparison itself is not a bad thing it's not good it's not bad it's not right it's not wrong it just is a manner in which we categorize things and people and ideas in our life. Not a single part of that is good, bad, right, or wrong, or the thief of joy or an endangerment to oneself or an act of violence towards oneself. But that's not what we actually mean when we say don't compare, right? That's not what we actually mean when we say don't compare your children's, don't compare yourself to someone else. That's not what we're talking about. Comparison is natural, something we do from a very small age. But there's also a learned subtext that we absorb from watching our parents and our siblings and our teachers and our classmates. And that is a subtext of judgment. The learned subtext that judgment inherently goes with comparison. First comparison, then judgment. So what does judgment actually mean? Again, dictionary.com defines judgment as, there was a couple of definitions. This is the one that I felt was most applicable to this. The forming of an opinion, estimate, notion, or conclusion as from circumstances presented to the mind. Okay, so that's not actually good, bad, right, or wrong either. Like, if I'm presented with these two pieces of fruit and I make the judgment uh, that I would like the orange to eat instead of the banana, that's not good, bad, right, or wrong. I'm not saying that banana is gross and disgusting and no one should ever eat bananas and we should burn down all the banana trees and that oranges are the only fruit that anyone should ever eat. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I want the, ban I want, I want the orange right now. I'm saying I want the orange right now. I'm making a judgment that I want the orange. So if judgment itself isn't inherently good, bad, right, or wrong, then we need to go a step deeper. It's comparison that then leads to judgment and the judgment of something or someone is inherently good, bad, right or wrong, superior or inferior. That's what we mean when we say comparison is the thief of joy. That's what we mean when they say comparison is self-destructive. And by placing the blame on comparing, we're missing the opportunity to dig deeper and look at what is actually going on. Look at the piece that is actually stealing our joy and stealing our peace. 
because good, bad, right, or wrong, superior and inferior are all perceptions of our mind that we each one of us have a unique one of. Each 7.5 billion people alive right now and everyone that ever has been and everyone that ever will be has a completely unique perception. And this judgment of good, bad, right, or wrong, superior and inferior happens so fast when we are unaware of its existence. And that is what is the thief of joy. That is what is damaging not only to ourselves, but to others. Specifically when we're dealing with humans, people, even animals, or living situations, circumstances, the judgment that one or the other is good, bad, right or wrong, superior, inferior, is where the damage happens. Robbing the joy and peace of both parties involved. And this is when this increased awareness of this deeper level of superiority and inferiority inferiority judgment that comes with comparison when we're aware of that we can then choose to respond differently so say i have two children i only have one but say i have two and i'm like one is six years old and one is four years old comparison not good bad right or wrong not one is superior or inferior maybe one got their teeth you know, got their first tooth when they were six months old and, and the other one didn't get their first tooth until they were nine months old. Still a comparison, but I'm not saying one is good, bad, right, or wrong. And if you are, check yourself. <laughs> check yourself. Why? Why does that matter? Or if you have a child that learned to read at six years old and another that didn't learn to really read until they were seven or eight. Is one good, bad, right, or wrong, superior, inferior, or is it just different timelines? One child is really good at sports and like physically strong and agile, and another child is really good at art or taking things apart and learning how they work and putting them back together. It's a comparison of skills, of natural abilities, but one is not good, bad, right, or wrong, or superior or inferior. It just is. So we need to be aware of these things, especially if we're talking about children, and especially if we're talking about people or other people. If you're driving on the street and you're like, wow, look at those people. They're living in a trailer. We're so lucky that we have a big house. Like, that's an inferred superiority to them when really it's just different it's just different and that's okay because we're all different or if you go to another country and you see how they live and you can see the differences it's not good bad right or wrong not one is superior or inferior to the other it just is and can we let that be while still making a judgment for ourselves. So let's look at the, the meme that I found of comparison is an act of violence against the self. Comparison is not an act of violence against the self. And it's not even the judgment that's underlying there. It's then the subtext judgment of I am inferior to whoever it is that I am comparing myself to. That is self-destructive. It's also self-destructive to um, think of yourself as superior to whoever you're comparing yourself to. Because we're all equal. There's none of us that are good, bad, right, or wrong, superior, or inferior. We are all human beings. And we're all on our own individual path. And we are all... 100% unique. I have never existed before in this form and in all of my perceptions and my experiences and my thoughts and beliefs, etc. Neither have you. And I'm not superior to you. And I'm not inferior to you. We're equal in that manner. 
But if I am looking at someone else and being like, man, she's thinner, she's thinner than I am. I am bigger than her. I can make that comparison without the added weight of I suck and I'm fat and ugly, right? I don't ever think that about myself. <laughs> and you shouldn't either, no matter what you look like. You can compare yourself to someone and not put the labels of superior and inferior on it and just be like, this is my body and I love it. And maybe a goal could be to be healthier. Maybe I could do more of the things that I want to do and have more energy and more strength and more flexibility and have a healthier physical body if I put more time and effort into that, right? That still doesn't mean it's a superior inferiority thing, right? But we can use comparison as motivation, as a catalyst for change in our life. It can be a catalyst to show us, to reveal to us, Something that we desire deep down that we're not doing. It can show us where our envy lies. It can show us where our jealousy lies. It can show us where our resentments are. Because those are all very closely related. Resentment is linked to envy and jealousy. Because it's a resentment that you get to do something or be something that I don't get to do. This is a root to the whole keeping up with the Joneses thing, right? So you're in a neighborhood on a street and you've got neighbors and you see, oh, the Joneses got a new truck. Well, we don't have a new truck. Why do they get a new truck? How do, how do they have money to get a new truck? Oh, they're going on vacation again? How can they go on vacation again? I want to go on vacation. We didn't get to go on vacation last year. It's that comparison, right? That they're superior because they have a new truck and get to go on vacations. And we're inferior because we don't have a new truck. And we didn't get to go on vacation last year. So one is not better or worse than the other. That's all a perception. But it also reveals some envy there of what you wish you had that you feel is not available to you. And something not feeling available to you is also a deep-seated belief that's not true because those things are available to you. It may mean that other things would have to shuffle around to make it possible. It would may mean that you would have to save up money for a, th a bit of time. It may mean these other things. It may mean, you know, shifting your career or going for a higher paying job or whatever, or taking on debt. Because a lot of the keeping up with the Joneses, a lot of those people are just in debt. <laughs> and that's not superior or inferior either. It's just a thing. It's literally just a thing that we all make our choices, right? And there is no good, bad, right, or wrong. And there is no superior and inferior. That's all this perception. And that when we become aware of that perception in the vein of comparison, then we can start to catch ourselves. So to wrap up this week's episode, comparison is not the thief of joy, and it is not an act of self-violence. And it's not even the judgment of whether something is for you or not for you. It's the subtext judgment of superiority and inferiority that causes the damage, especially when we're talking about ourselves, children, other people. And if we have an upgraded awareness to catch those moments and to shift it back down into neutrality and truth, we will cultivate more joy and more peace in our lives and the lives of everyone around us. Thank you for joining me on this fourth episode of Peace by Pieces. Please hit the subscribe button or subscribe to your podcast to hear more. Thank you so much.